Hey, welcome into Candlestick Chronicles, a 49ers podcast on the Blue Wire Podcast Network. I'm Kyle Madsen. I write about the 49ers over at NinersWire.com, part of the USA Today Sports Media Group. Joining me right now, Chris Biederman of the Sacramento Bee. And before we get to the 49ers' third consecutive loss, let's chat about our friends over at Lamb Chops. SGLambchops.com is the website. Follow them on Instagram, at SGLambchops, for all the latest styles. They have a winter line coming out. It is our favorite fashion brand. It is the official clothing brand of candlestick chronicles and i can't wait for that winter line to come out because based on everything else i've ever seen from lamb chops it's gonna be dope can't see them right now but i'm rocking some lamb chop sweats super comfortable the fit the fit is right on these like a very modern sort of take on on the sweatpant and jogger um the premium zippers on the pockets super clutch uh we we love some zippered pockets here at Candlestick yeah. Chronicles and um, and Lamb Chops does does some phenomenal ones. So shout out to Lamb Chops and our guy Craig. SGLambchops.com is a website. Use promo code Candlestick20 for 20% off your order today. We're also sponsored by Cooperage Brewing. Cooperagebrewing.com. That's the website there. They make the Candlestick Chronicles Hazy IPA that Chris and I both love so very much. But there are so many other good beers there. You can order them online. They can send a case right to your front door if you're 21 or over and in the state of California. Maybe you're in the Santa Rosa area or in the just general vicinity of the North Bay and you want to go visit the brewery. Recommend doing that. Good people there. Good vibes. Always a nice food truck. Bring your dog. There's outdoor seating. It's a great spot. I love Cooperage, man. Just great vibes. Uh, you like West Coast IPAs. You like hazy pale ales. Mm. Um, you like hazy IPAs. Mm. Uh, you like Bobby Pills, a very, very strong Pilsner. Um, they have strawberry, watermelon, and mint sparkle pants, hard seltzer. Delicious. If jam, or if Delicious. Someone, if someone you're you're hanging with uh, would rather go that route, it's all there for you. Can I? Um, how about a mellow sunshine wheat ale with apricots? Obviously. Um, if if you're into if you're into those style of beers, there's a little bit of everything at Cooperage. And I say it every time we talk about them. I would put it up against anybody, um, particularly in the North Bay scene. And we know how good the North Bay beer scene is. It's um, great. So shout out to Cooperage. I tried the the uh, the strawberry mint sparkle pants during our live event. It mm-hmm. is fantastic. You know how some seltzers taste like if somebody like whispers the flavor to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, it is not. It it is not like that. It's a flavorful. It's very good, and I definitely recommend those if you're not a big beer person. Maybe you're not a, a, a gluten person, and and you like a, a and you like a what, what's that called a sparkling. That's not a cider, but you know what I mean. Sure. Anyways, if you're a, if you're a vibes person, to and if you're listening to this right podcast, there. you obviously are. You obviously are. All right, right Cooper's Brewing, Cooper'sBrewing.com. Let's <laughs> talk about the fucking 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the 49ers lost again. Man. Boy, they stink is... right now. Yeah, man. It's th- like so many times during this year's run, or not this year, the, the last the run over the last few years, you could you could point to like losses and say, well, they lost because they like screwed this part of the game up right. or they were missing this person. Um, and not to make like excuses for losses, but you could like trace logic to, well, they're not really that bad of a team, right? They just like, there are some extenuating circumstances. They lost games, losses happened in the league. I think today was one of the more alarming losses that the 49ers have had yeah. since they've been good under Kyle Shanahan because they had every reason to come out and play well, right? Like the defense had every reason to come out and play with a ton of force and be pissed off after what happened in Cleveland and Minnesota. Yep. Um, and frankly, they didn't. They got off to a, a terrible start. Um, the defense got a little bit better, but I, I just thought the the defense in the first half was, was more or less just like awful, non-existent. Um, I thought they were super lucky to even go into halftime down four points. I agree. Um, in the the Bengals had three possessions. All of them ended in 49ers territory. Three of them, the last play was within the 49ers 10 yard line. And the Bengals only scored 14 points, which is, you know, it could have been it could have been a lot worse than 14. 
Um, and then the 49ers are driving to tie the game after the Bengals kick that field goal. And you feel like, OK, they, they, they can tie it at 17 and, and they're in this thing. The defense can bounce back. We've seen the defense sort of have bad halves before and then play really well in the second half. And then Brock mm -hmm. Purdy throws the, the play breaks down. Right. It was very clearly a broken play from the from the start. And Brock Purdy <laughs> is supposed to hand it off or pitch it to somebody or something. So he was supposed some, to hand somewhere. it off. Yeah, somewhere along the line, I don't know. Was it Elijah Mitchell's screw up? Yeah, like, I, don't I don't know, know whose happened. screw up it was, but I, I've I don't think I don't know that I've ever seen a play get broken that badly, where that was supposed to be a, a lot. Like it, it was supposed to be Cleveland a handoff, too. and then he it pretty like faked like he was gonna shovel pass it, and then he rolled out, and then looked like it was a designed throw to Mitchell the whole way, only he had him early, but then didn't throw it. And then when he finally did throw it, he just threw it to the linebacker instead. As a, oh, it was, it, so it was a broken oh. play. I mean, that, that to me is one of the more alarming things. And we even talked about it uh, back going back to the Cleveland game. There were a couple plays where it was just like, something is clearly off. Like someone is just not doing the right thing. It's not even about like, it, it's just about based like, the ba the very basic function of doing your responsibility in a, of a play and executing the play. It's not like mm -hmm. missing a block or like getting overpowered by somebody. It's like going to the wrong place. It's like very basic execution stuff that the 49ers are typically super good at. And they just like, they failed. Like that, you know, I talked about it after the Cleveland game, there was like the screen where like Mason didn't even go out to be the pass catcher. He was like blocking somebody on the mm -hmm. backside of the play and it didn't make any sense, right? And so the, the, just like a basic execution fundamentals thing broke down and it led to Brock Purdy throwing a heinous interception on a, it was what, first and goal from the seven? Yeah. And in, instead of the Niners scoring there and tying the game with a potential touchdown, mm -hmm. then the Bengals go down, field position changes again. Purdy throws another interception on his very next snap and then the snap after that, the Bengals go up two scores. And then at that point, it's like, all right, this game's a wrap. Yeah. And the reason why, going back to the original point that I think this is so alarming, it's that it's a lot of facets to losing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the defense is not playing nearly at the, at the level we're all accustomed to. It's mm -hmm. Brock Purdy throwing interceptions that are Jimmy Garoppolo-esque, right? The, the offense not even functioning. Um, at the level that we're used to mm -hmm. on top of like the injury stuff and and typically like they've in in the past like you know you lose Debo Samuel you lose some of your guys it's like difficult to overcome those injuries but one of the games we always talk about is 2019 when the 49ers were missing both their starting tackles and they went mm -hmm. down to LA and just whooped the Rams ass yep and there was and Kyle Juszczyk today. right there was none of that today so it, it's just it, it, here's I, I my. This here, is a. This is like a four alarm fire right now. It feels like. It, not, it not, is not and to mention here, the Steve Wilk stuff or the, you know Nick Mo or Jake Moody. Sorry, <laughs> Jake Moody, not Nick Moody. Jake Moody wasn't even an issue today, but we're but talking you, about like you look at the 49ers issues. There's issues on offense mm -hmm. with at quarterback throwing interceptions. There's issues defensively with them not being able to cover anybody on top of the pass rush issues that are just like impossible to really explain given the talent that they have. There's mm -hmm. a kicker situation and there's a defensive coordinator. It's like there are fires everywhere. It feels like, like there's, you, there are more issues with the 49ers right now than I remember there being even going back to like 2020 when like you could just point to like, well, their entire team is injured and it makes sense right. why they're not playing well. Like this is crazy to me. What's what's unbelievable is they outgained the Bengals by 60 yards did 460 yards of offense today and they averaged 8.2 yards per play and i understand that there was a, a the garbage time completion to mccaffrey and then yeah, there, the there was late... 69 yards on the last uh on that last possession there that was basically garbage time right but but even still, still yeah the, it, it, take that away they're still up over like seven and a half yards per play and I, I don't, it, it's, <laughs> I don't want to go overboard with the offense.
because to me it's a twofold thing. They're obviously missing Trent Williams and Debo Samuel. They cannot run to the left side right now. That just doesn't exist for them. Every time they try and run left, there's nothing happening. So not only are they limiting their run game to one side, but they are then putting themselves in second and long and third and long because they cannot stretch defenses horizontally the way they were. Like there's right. just not the threats aren't the same without Trent Williams and Debo Samuel on the field. And they're still like they're they're being efficient. They're getting yards, but you're just seeing these turnovers. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the turnovers are happening when the 49ers are playing from behind. And we always talk about complementary football with San Francisco, right? It was that was part of the reason that they averaged almost 30 points a game in 2019 was in part because their defense was giving them short fields with turnovers or by uh, just getting stops deep in opponent territory and and flipping field position and just making life easier on the offense. This year, to me, it's the opposite. Part part of the reason that the Niners' offensive issues are are, are being so highlighted right now are, are are such a such a big deal is because their defense can't get a stop. The Niners got they they went down and they they got a touchdown with uh, with eight minutes left. They got a touchdown to pull it within one, and you're going, all right, they're at home. They're down seven. It's 24-17. They're down seven. Offense just cooked. You feel like they're starting to roll a little bit. Now you have this awesome defense. It goes and gets a stop, and you're going to have six plus, seven plus minutes to try and go get a touchdown. And instead, they give up a 10-play, 78-yard touchdown drive to end it. And... That, that's why all of this, to me, comes down to the defense. Because Brock Purdy, while we give him a lot of credit, it's just pretty clear that he's in that tier of quarterback that just needs help. And he needs a, a defense that's getting stops, and he can't play from behind. And that's fine. But that's what the 49ers have built. That's why they went with Brock Purdy. Because they felt the bar had been lowered so far that, hey, you know what? As long as we're playing from ahead, this guy's just gonna just gonna be awesome. But now that script isn't working, and it's exposing their <laughs> their kind of fundamental flaw, which is that they have Brock Purdy at quarterback, and that's not going to work when you're giving up twenty four or thirty points or or whatever it is and playing from behind. Yeah, I mean, I I think. I think it's certainly fair to look at to look at Purdy and and some of the plays that, you know, it, like it 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 it's never really felt like the 49ers can't move the ball. It's just felt like when they get to those moments, particularly recently, and and our buddy Nick Wagner, I was looking up his tweet just to make sure I had this right. 49ers have had, have three red zone turnovers in their last four games, and they had zero in the first four games of the season. Right. And so that's basically mm -hmm. like instead of tying the game, essentially, that first that first pick and then obviously the second pick that went from tying the game to being down 14. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, like, I think Purdy can still can still move the ball. But I think defenses like particularly the, the second interception, I feel like was, was a so product bad. of well, I feel like it was a product, too, of linebackers. Like how many throws has he made just over the hands of a linebacker? to that deep cross yep. this year like it feels yep. like he's done it twice a game at least yep. right mm -hmm. and it feels like the adjustment is just hey get more if you're a linebacker get two two more steps of depth yep and then like purdy's got to be the one making the adjustment mm -hmm. to where like man you're, you're not going to be able to make that throw as often as you have um so yeah i i, th I just i i think purdy like is still young. Like I, I'm of the mind that like Purdy's still young, still has plenty of opportunity to get better. There were always going to be lumps coming, right? He wasn't mm -hmm. going to be this dude that was just going to win every single game and never throw an interception and sure. just never really deal with any adversity like that. That was always coming, mm -hmm. but the way it's been coming has certainly been alarming because I think probably the most underrated thing about Brock Purdy's run before this losing streak started was just how good he was at taking care of the football. Right. And now we're, now that's starting to become an issue to mm -hmm. me when, when I like that, that, and that's an underlying issue for sure. I, I do think if they're able to get healthy and that's obviously a question mark, if mm -hmm. they're able to get Debo Samuel and Trent Williams back, 
they can have as good of an offense as they could possibly need. And, and that even comes with the, like the idea, like, I think they could play from behind, right? Like, I think they would Mm. be able to play from behind if they get Debo Samuel and Trent Williams back. We haven't seen it yet, but I, I like, I don't, I also don't think it's entirely a coincidence that this run has come while Trent Williams has been either banged up or out of the lineup. To me, the bigger issue, the bigger issue to me is the defense. Correct. And yes. it's not it, it like for me watching them play today, like the schematics aren't like clearly they don't have an advantage schematically right now. Like right. the third, the third, the third down run that Joe Burrow had where he just recognized like Trey Greenlaw's in coverage. There's space to that side. And I'm just going to have a running lane take off was an obvious like an obvious play where where steve wilkes just got out foxed right he was just like Mm -hmm. he didn't have an answer and that was like a schematic thing but even worse than that it doesn't feel like the defense is playing with the same intensity that it did in previous it's so strange dude it doesn't feel like and it like like i don't think it was because robert sala was like on the sideline and like celebrating with guys i don't necessarily think it's that i just don't know and this goes back to what we were talking about with steve wilkes during his press conference last week where he like comes out and apologizes for the blitz call, like acting like I, like I get it. It was a mistake, but it was just so melodramatic and so like seemingly unnecessary to me. Like Steve Mm -hmm. Wilkes didn't, he didn't hurt anybody. He didn't go commit a crime. He didn't break a law. Like he didn't, (laughs) you know, like he, he just had a bad play call and he walked in there. Like he had to, you know, he had to apologize to like his wife's mother or something for doing something, you know, like it, it was just really weird the way they're playing seems to me like it's a manifestation that they don't have a ton of belief in, in the coordinator. Like they don't, they're not playing with this like intensity and vigor that they played Mm -hmm. with D'Amico Ryans and Robert Sala. Yeah. And one of the things those guys did, which they passed on to each other when they broke down the film early in the week, they tracked like they called them loafs, right? Like who is not playing with a hundred and, thousand percent maximum effort on any given play and if that shows up on tape we are calling you out in the film Mm -hmm. room and you are going to hear about it and there's going to be some sort of demerit system with getting getting caught with like for loafing on the field sure and to me it's like it just doesn't seem like the defense is playing with that same level of intensity and that starts with the with the defensive line like it doesn't like those dudes when the going back to 2019 and even last year those dudes just played with hellacious intensity like we are if anything they were they were going to match or play harder than their opponent at all times and what put them over the top was how talented they are and fred mm-hmm. warner and dre greenlaw and talanoa hufunga to an extent still fly around but it just doesn't feel like the defense as a whole, like the defense as a whole feels like it's kind of playing on its heels as yeah. opposed to like, we're just going to attack and we're going to go kick your ass because we're better than you. It doesn't well, feel like they have that mindset right now. It will. And, and on top of that, I, I think the point you make about them not trusting the coordinator necessarily is a, is a sound one because how often did we see with, with Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryan's, how often would you see the 49ers have a drive or two defensively where it looks like they just were kind of outmatched? And then they would fix it. In the game, on the fly, they would change something schematically. Or it's more blitzing, or more zone, or less zone, or uh, rolling coverage to Devontae Adams, or what, whatever it is. We saw them make those adjustments in games constantly. And with Steve Wilkes, it feels like there's none of that. It didn't even feel like there was an adjustment week to week from from last week to this one. D- Kirk Cousins was incredibly comfortable and in throwing to open receivers all of the time on Monday night. And then today, you expect something different from the 49ers and they they had nothing. And they got th- they had three sacks on Joe Burrow, but outside of outside of those three sacks and he's really good at mo- moving around in the pocket and I thought he made a couple of really nice plays today. Uh, particularly the one in the first quarter where Armstead had him wrapped up and then Bosa had him wrapped up and he got away from both of them and then and then threw for a first down. Like that, you can't necessarily blame the scheme. But 
there were Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Irv Smith. Didn't matter. There were so many instances. Tyler Boyd, Tyler Bird, per the guy in the the PA uh, announcer in the in the press box. Uh, <laughs> Tyler Tyler Boyd running wide open. It, it was. It looked like. Jordan Addison and KJ Osborne and Brandon Powell and TJ Hawkinson last week. So I don't know what the fix is. I haven't, I haven't gotten to the all 22 yet to see if they, if what they're doing. But to me, there is some kind of fix because not a talent problem. You know, they're talented, but it just feels like they're not letting their defensive line work and they're giving up these short completions and a ton of yak and i don't i don't know what the answer is they're missing a ton of tackles too that's also a problem like very like fundamentally just missing a ton of tackles mm-hmm. and there is there's no reason for them to just be missing that many tackles like i thought the perfect encapsulation of it was isaiah oliver getting flagged for leading with his helmet mm-hmm. on a tackle that he missed Dude, so brutal. So brutal. <laughs> he, hit a, he led with his helmet, hit him with his helmet, and then missed the tackle. And this guy still got, you know, five or six yards after. So brutal, dude. After that play. Yeah. I'd, he also gave up two touchdowns. Yeah. he He's Isaiah Oliver is the type of dude who will, like, give up a couple plays, but also make a couple. He made a few unbelievable plays, especially in the run game today. Yeah. But so, like, I, they, it's. But I don't even, like, I. The, the tackling thing to me is the most befuddling part of it. And like Dre Greenlaw looks hurt to me. Like the mm. way he's moving around just he looks got like he's railroaded he's by Joe Mixon today. In, yeah. He lo- he just looks like he's constantly in pain. And he's got that big giant elbow brace. We know he's dealing with the leg injury that kept him out uh, of last week's game. So like, or two weeks ago? Yeah, two weeks ago. Yes. Um, but he played last week. Yeah, I just... And not to say that that's an excuse, but like where, like where is Nick Bosa, and what's his? And Nick, Bo, I saw Nick Bosa put a sleeve on his on his arm today. Maybe that, maybe he's dealing with some injury and isn't fully healthy, and that's that's something. Well, there he's were, not talking about. But this, but like this, this to me gets back to the coverage thing. When you talk about Nick Bosa specifically, there were multiple times against Minnesota, and then and then today where he is a half step short of a sack because the the easier throw is is open and available. And the quarterback's not having to think. Right. So, yeah, I the defense it, it's befuddling to me, and it was it was at a point in the first half, and the defense was a little bit better in the second half. I don't blame the defense for everything that went wrong in the second half because I think, you know, some of that was was just a product of like where the game was. I thought the defense was actually better in the second half, mm-hmm. but in the first half it was like man. It, is Steve Wilkes going to be this team's coordinator for much longer? Bro, I'm not. Like, I hate. Like, here's, I am not. I am not hyperbolic. Like fire the guy. Same. But like, it, it, it's not even. It, to me, it's less about scheme and getting out schemed. It's like, dude, these guys aren't even playing that hard for you. Right. And that's, that's that so, to me is what's most alarming about the Steve Wilkes situation. It's not that like, oh, they're completing a lot of passes or whatever. I think they could fix that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's that like, man, these guys just don't look like they care as much as they used to. So I have two, I have two things with this because I'm with you. I am very rarely a this guy's got to go type person. Like, very rarely. But everything we've talked about and the problems that the 49ers have had the last two games all point to me to something having to do with coaching. And you have a bye week now. And... If you're Kyle Shanahan and you call in Steve Wilkes to your office and go, hey, explain to me what fixes you're going to make in the second half, if you don't get, or not in the second half, but in the second half of the year, yeah. after the bye, why, if he's not satisfied with that answer, I don't know what the motivation is to keep Steve Wilkes. And maybe Wilkes has something at the bye week that'll change everything and but man i i I gotta think if you're looking for solutions right now i (laughs) it's not like they're they're missing a bunch of people defensively they have all their dudes they're just not playing well 
Yeah. So the other the other problem is is they hired Steve Wilkes because they didn't feel they had an internal candidate who was ready. So what are you doing if you fire him? Yeah, that's a, that's another point. I don't know, like, I don't know who who it would be. Is it Bullocks? Holland? I have no yeah, idea. I don't, know. I don't know if Holland is. I don't know if Holland's a guy either. I have like, no clue. Kasurik? I think Chris Kasurik is one of those guys who's going to be a defensive line coach and a defensive line coach only for however <laughs> long he wants to do it. Like he's not, you know. Yeah, I mean, Nate Thomas in the chat on on YouTube, and if you're not streaming with us on YouTube or subscribe to the channel, please do that. Um, but Nate Thomas says, "Can we have the Hargrave conversation yet?" Yeah, I feel like Javon Hargrave flashes a lot and he pushes the pocket a lot, but in terms of the results, I think it's a very similar conversation as to Nick Bosa. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. he's a good player. Obviously, there are going to be pressure metrics and and you know PFF grades and all that that are going to show that he's playing at a better level than maybe his overall sack numbers would indicate. Mm -hmm. But where, like, where's the impact on the game that that's having, right? Like, well, how I is that right. manifesting? <laughs> how is that manifesting into wins and losses? Because the last three weeks, obviously it isn't. So that's, and that's what, if you're Steve Wilkes and you're looking at it, because like you just said, there's metrics that show. And, and when you watch the defensive line, it's not like they're getting stonewalled and just not moving. Like there's pressure, but it's not enough that's forcing a quarterback off their spot or uh, f forcing that quarterback to, you know, be uncomfortable, maybe throw it sooner than they'd like to or whatever it is. And that to me is where your defensive coordinator comes in and you go, okay, why is that happening? And if you don't have an answer for that, then find someone who does. Because there's something going on, and maybe it's personnel related in the secondary. Maybe they're just not good enough. But I have a hard time believing that this team was this good through the first five weeks. Opponents aside, this team was this good through the first five weeks, and now all of a sudden can't stop anybody. Yeah. Because even against Cleveland, they they had a full ass drive where Cleveland took the lead where they couldn't get a stop against PJ Walker. PJ Walker, yeah. And then Kirk Cousins looks like prime Brady, and then Joe Burrow does the same. And Cousins and Burrow are both really good players. Like you're not going to stop them entirely. But what the what the Bengals have today? One real punt, and then the, there was one punt, and then the one at the end of the game where they were just they were out of downs <laughs> with no time left. They ran 62 plays and had eight third downs. Yeah, eight third was, downs and what was twenty nine first downs with eight third downs is insane. It was like it, it was just an ass kicking. It would like it didn't make. And this I, is the it, third week in a I row we've have, said that. Yeah, it, it just it it doesn't track given the talent that they have. Yeah, I think it's fair to say from a pure talent perspective, this should be a top three defense in the NFL. Isn't it? It's not close. Yes. And right now it's not playing anything close to that. Yep. And I think you have to look at coaching. And again, like, I don't know if it's purely schematics or if it's like, do they just not buy in with this dude? Because that to me, like, I, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but that to me is the biggest issue right now defensively is it feels like they are not bought in or there's something wrong with the vibes something like there's something behind the scenes that they're like man do we do we believe and like i get it i'm watching that press conference last week it's like you can get a pretty good idea like a press conference setting is a little bit similar to like a team meeting or mm -hmm. like when you're talking to the media it's kind of similar to what to the dynamic of like talking to your players obviously you're going to say different things to your players than you would the media but mm -hmm. like if if you're a media member and you're in a press conference, you could kind of tell like, Oh yeah, I could play for that guy. Like I, like I would buy into what that guy's selling me. Sure. Based on the mannerisms and the way they talk. And that stuff sort of translates to coaching. It's like why Jim Tom Sula's introductory press conference was such a red flag. It's why we, it's why we talk about press conferences so much when they are like intro press conferences for new coaches and stuff. We're like, could we, could we realistically see the team buying into what this guy's selling? 
And if the answer is yes, and that's like the baseline for a decent NFL coach, right? And I'm not saying Steve Wilkes isn't a good leader based on press conferences and stuff. I just watched his his press conference on Thursday and I was like, man, this guy like really feels like a deer in the headlights right now. And yeah, for a, like a guy who didn't a, have any answers, a guy who didn't have answers and a guy who's taking over a defense that's super talented. And this just feels like the defense doesn't have a whole lot of belief in the guy who's giving him the calls on any given play. Right. I agree. So. It's just not. And, and so what I'm curious to see, because Brock Purdy again today, the stat line looks excellent, but when you watch the game, he had a couple of nice throws down the field, particularly to, to George Kittle up the seam. But man, the, the first interception was not only a poor decision, but just, just brutal execution. And I mean, Elijah he could, Mitch- a, he could have thrown a grenade to Elijah Mitchell and he would have walked in the end zone. Right. And that's that's my that's the whole issue for me is he gets sped up and all of a sudden makes an awful throw. Like it was just he I, I don't think I've ever seen a good quarterback do that. I've seen bad quarterbacks do that where the linebackers running at them and they just throw a pick. <laughs> but I was just a baffling, just a baffling lack of execution from from a player who like that's his bag, like that's Brock Purdy's whole deal, is being able to okay he's going to create out of structure and he doesn't have a big arm but you know what that little touch pass over the top he's going to connect on that every time, and he just didn't, and then the second interception like you said was clearly a a, a good adjustment but I think it was Logan Wilson, who just read exactly where that throw was going and. You had a very Jimmy Garoppolo esque pick, where it felt like Purdy was dead set on throwing that ball down the middle and let it rip, even the linebacker standing right in front of him. So, I'm not. I now have more questions about Brock Purdy than I did two weeks ago, and I definitely have more doubt now than I did two weeks ago that he's like a franchise guy and is ultimately going to lift their ceiling higher than Jimmy Garoppolo did. Like that's definitely a question mark for me, but I don't think you can say anything definitive until you have Trent Williams and Debo Samuel back in the mix. And from there it's like, because if the defense continues to play poorly, like the whole thing with Brock Purdy and him being, you know, different or being the guy and being the reason that they traded away Trey Lance was because like, oh, he's good enough that they can play from behind. That, oh, he doesn't necessarily need all these weapons because he's that individually good. And they don't need to have a top five defense to win games. And <laughs> clearly based on the last two weeks, they do. So again, it's not, there's no Trent Williams. There's no Debo Samuel. Those are two really important gogs to this offense. So I, I'm the jury's still out for me, but uh, the last two weeks have been not encouraging from the quarter. And, also, and I, and this is not me making excuses for Brock Purdy, but this is just talking about the offense overall. It also feels like they're killing themselves with penalties, like penalties and negative plays mm-hmm. to where there's they're like part of what, the 49ers have done so well when they've been playing well offensively is setting up, you know, like even avoiding third downs, like being really good on first and second down. And so often are they like, all right, instead of third and three, they're dealing with, <laughs> they're dealing with, you know, third and eight. And it's okay. just, it, it's a lot different. Like, again, these are, these are like negative runs. These are penalties. These are sacks, right? These are like, mm. this is not me making an excuse for Brock Purdy. I think one of the symptoms of them struggling is constantly putting themselves behind the sticks and they have to fix that too if they're going to optimize what they have at quarterback. <laughs> I'm with you. That is dead on where I'm at. But can we go back? I, I want to talk about the first quarter just really quick. So the 49ers get the ball first and they get an eight yard run from Christian McCaffrey on first down over the right side, mind you. They then try a run up the middle. I think it was behind Aaron Banks and it goes for a yard and then they go hand off to Kyle use check for a loss of a yard and they punt. 
<laughs> the lack of creativity on those play calls was astounding. You have Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey. And on third and one, after your second and two got stuffed, it's Kyle Juszczyk just into the line. That did not make any sense to me. And then they follow that up with, and I'm going to try and remember all these. Jamar Chase fumbles on the first play of the game. And the ball was there. The 49ers had players in the vicinity and nobody dove on it. And Chase got it back. Then a couple plays later, Isaiah Oliver drops an interception where he jumped a route and did a really nice job, jumped the route, dropped the interception. And then there was, after the Niners scored a touchdown, they give up the huge kick return that gives the Bengals the ball in the 43. Like, all of this is happening in the first th two series and a kickoff of the game. It's like, that's a disaster, dude. Like, that, <laughs> from the jump there, that it felt like you kind of knew what way the game was going to go. Just when you have all those different little miscues in the first couple series. But the the play calling with Shanahan on that first drive was what really, really uh, baffled me. Because they've been so much more creative with Brock Purdy because he trusts him to throw it. And on their first drive, they got ahead of the sticks, like you were just talking about, and then didn't do anything with it. It was a bizarre, it was a bizarre stretch in the first quarter. They have to figure out how to run the ball because it, it is clear, it's becoming more clear that Brock Purdy is not going to be effective, nearly as effective if they're not running the ball well. Correct. And the last three games, going back to Cleveland, Minnesota, and obviously today, they're averaging 95 rushing yards a game. Before, in the first five, they had 188, 159, mm -hmm. 141, 124, and 170 rushing yards. Mm -hmm. So, like, they, in their last three, they're at 113, 108, and 65. So, that, like, Brock Purdy, I think, is is emerging as, you know, like, I think the idea that, like, oh, Brock Purdy has to have, like, optimal circumstances for you to play well, I think that's a little bit overblown. I mm -hmm. think it was way more true for Jimmy Garoppolo mm -hmm. uh, because I still think Purdy's more dynamic. And even Purdy today, like running around like he did mm -hmm. and getting all those extra yards off scrambles yeah, was obviously something the 49ers would never get from Jimmy Garoppolo. But I think it's clear for the offense to be a top five offense in the league like it was during the first five games of the season, they have to run the ball effectively. Mm -hmm. And whether it's teams just loading up and saying – you know, try to run the ball against our against our nine man front with five guys down. Mm -hmm. uh, go for it, and obviously that does not work nearly as well without Trent Williams, right? Mm -hmm. But or just you know, I or is it just as simple as getting Trent Williams back? Um, and then I you feel see, like it you might like, be that simple. Saw, yeah, I mean, and then you saw, um, you know, they had that drive in the third quarter where it was just play action flow, play action flow, play action flow. Oh. Mm -hmm. and then that worked so it was like does Kyle Shanahan get away from play action maybe too much you know is that a question but I think that the point here is that Brock Purdy might not be I mean did we did we have the Brock Purdy MVP conversation after the Dallas game yes and then like, they've lost three straight since then so good on, good on us good on us crushing it <laughs> but I think it's pretty clear that the running game is really the most important thing for this offense because it does, it confirms what we've known about Kyle Shanahan offenses in the past is that mm -hmm. when the running game's going, it sets everything else up and it allows them to play ahead of the sticks. But yeah. when the running game is not going, and, and obviously part of that is a function of being behind in the game, which also mm -hmm. goes back to the defense, allowing the Bengals to go and, and get the lead with their first possession and then get it, you know, get it, get another touchdown with their second right. possession. Or at least was it going back and look? Yeah, they scored touchdowns their first two possessions. Um, so a lot, a lot more plays into it than just like run the ball effectively. Obviously, there's a game script and all that, right? But it's it's clear that Brock Purdy has to have a good running game. I think for them to go to where they want to go, they mm -hmm. have to be one of, if not the best rushing teams in the league, and they and have that's, absolutely that's... have not been the last three weeks. Yep. 
And that's where that's where Trent Williams being out, Debo Samuel being out. It's like okay, you can offensively. I think they're going to be fine. It's it's the defense where I have real questions. Like what's the fix? Because they're healthy. Yeah. I mean, they've got their guys are on the field, so there there has to be something. Because yeah, that's a good point. It is a lot easier to find the fixes in the offense than it is on defense. <laughs> What's I, happening over there? I'm sorry. I sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> I hope someone screenshotted the look on your face with how mad you just got at your cat. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's not supposed to be up here regardless, but like sometimes he'll jump up onto the table on my left side right here and he'll just sit and that I don't mind. But I was having a yogurt before the show and he loves yogurt. And so my yogurt container was sitting here and this bitch just jumped up onto the table and beelined it for that yogurt like I wasn't going to notice. I'm not mad that he tried it. I'm mad that he insulted my intelligence in that way. Like, I wouldn't be able to just push him off. Like, he thinks he's the apex predator in this home and not me. He doesn't understand that his life is in my hands. And that's what irks me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. um, It's fine. I'm not going to say... Yeah, I'm not going to say... If the 49ers defense attacked the Bengals, the way my cat just tried to attack that yogurt container, they might've had Ooh. a dub today. Or you're That's treating all. like, or you're treating your cat like the Niners defense treated Joe Burrow and just kind of let him do his thing. No, cause I got him out of here. Oh, oh you did. Okay. <laughs> oh no, no, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, no, I know. It's, c- c- see, look at this. I don't, cats are always in charge. That's from Dan. Uh, Lori, who A plus Niners takes from Lori, by the way. Uh, cats don't care, Kyle. They run the show. I know. I got it. Uh, I looked up the last time a team had 29 or more first downs and eight or fewer third down attempts. Do you know what it was? Off the it's top recent. of my head? It wasn't like a long time ago. No, I, I don't know off the top of my head. It was the 49ers against Arizona <laughs> this year. <laughs> they had 30 oh, first wow. downs and five third down attempts. <laughs> That's insane. Anyways, it's only happened. Uh, it's only happened thirty times now in NFL history, according to Stathead, which is crazy. Also, uh, Brock Purdy today: thirty attempts, eleven point eight yards per attempt, and seventeen points. That's the fewest points ever by a quarterback with those numbers. That's neat. <laughs> it's I, weird. I, that's I... the weird thing is you can't you can't outside of the turnovers like that's it because Christian McCaffrey had the fumble last week. Brock Purdy had the two interceptions this week. Brock Purdy had the two interceptions and the fumble granted the fumble just kind of sealed the game. And it wasn't the reason they lost, but it's all the other numbers are good. They're moving the ball. They're being efficient. They're just, <laughs> they had four. So even take away the last drive, they have almost 400 yards of offense. And I was looking because I, I didn't look at the stat line after the game ended. Brock Purdy, 22 of 31, 71% completions, 365 yards. 365 yards, bro. 11.8 yards per attempt. Like, efficiency bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, but, 11.8 yards per attempt is insane. But two picks, so. Yeah, in the fourth for quarter. Reference, Joe, Burrow, Joe Burrow had a very good game and had 8.8 yards per attempt. Brock Purdy, fourth quarter, 11 of 14, 177 yards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But that interception, I, man. Yeah. The the offense was the reason why they, I think the offense, I mean, the offense and defense was, were both like substantial reasons why they lost. I thought the offense was like really just like the knife getting twisted in the second half. Mm-hmm. The defense was just really bad overall but i do think like there are fixes for the offense i don't know what the fixes are for the defense aside Mm -hmm. from the dudes just playing better and i have no idea if if that means like getting a new defensive coordinator i have no idea if that's even possible and if there's an option that would make sense or if steve wilkes has to I don't know. Like it, it was just really alarming to me last week too. And I hate to keep harping on that press conference, but like him talking about still learning the defense. Yeah. That's and wild. Like, that's, un- that's like not acceptable. Adjusting to the personnel. It's like, bro, 
any football coach worth their salt would love to have your problems like you adjusting to the personnel and the scheme and stuff like that should have been done in the off season right like that mm-hmm. is adjusting to the like figuring out what everyone's good at is your job in april through july and then like by the time training camp comes around you have a plan in place that optimizes everyone you have you cannot be a super bowl contending team with a defense that expects to be one of the best three in the in the league Mm -hmm. and you as a defensive coordinator is like i'm still trying to figure out who these guys are yeah like you got you got all pros at all levels of the field my guy yep like (laughs) if 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 you cannot make this work then that's a big issue and maybe it's the players maybe all the players have their heads up their collective asses i don't know i just can't possible like steve wilkes isn't isn't the one who's missing tackles so like there's an element that's true that there's an element of that too but like it it just has to be better and i have no idea what the fixes are because this is confounding and like it just doesn't make sense whereas offensively you can be like all right get trent williams back get debo back you're going to run the ball better cut down on the turnover stay ahead of the sticks that there's like there's a line of logic there defensively it's like you're you have all your guys like they're not missing anybody due to injury so like Mm -hmm. what's the deal like why why are you allowing these teams to just go up and down the field like it felt like as soon as Cincinnati scored that t- second touchdown that it was like, man, this is they, they're probably going to lose. That's really what it felt like when they scored that second touchdown. I was like, yeah, this is this is it not over. Go today. It felt over. And I am very much not like the man first quarter, really like that. That's going to sink this team. Mm-hmm. They, and they had a chance to get back in into it in the third quarter, of course. But like it felt like, OK, Niners defense doesn't have any answers. And Mm -hmm. it was just not a promising sign from a group that has developed and earned so much trust just with how well they've played that like that trust just doesn't seem to be there anymore. You cannot trust the 49ers defense right now, which is an insane thing to say, because coming into the year, we're like, no matter what, their defense is going to be top five. They just got to have a quarterback who can who can, you know, steer the car a little bit. But now it's like, where's the defense? Like what? You know, that's the backbone of the team. And if they don't have a backbone, then they're not they're not anywhere near a Super Bowl contender. Yeah, that's it. I don't I, I'm. They need to buy week. That's great. But to me, that's just not anywhere close to where this team should have been. And it's worth noting. It's, it's kind of weird. Five and three is their second best record after eight weeks under Kyle Shanahan. The only time they were better was in 2019 when they were 7 and 0. But they've been 4 or 4 or worse in every other year that Kyle Shanahan's been the head coach, so it's like this is a the, one of the best spots they've been in, but it just feels so much worse than it did last year or the year before. I have a question, and I'm asking yeah. this not because I'm going to be making excuses, guy. Did we underrate the schedule days of rest discrepancy thing that we've maybe maybe that that I'd be interested because Warren Sharp published that about how the Niners have the biggest rest discrepancy. But then there was which means, you know, uh, the 49ers played Monday. The Bengals had a bye, So the Bengals have a plus like nine rest discrepancy or whatever the days work out. to. Right. So the Niners had the worst one of those in the league. They played the Browns coming off their bye. They played the Bengals coming off their bye. Then the Niners get a bye and play the Jags who are coming off their bye. Yeah. So so my my problem with that was he didn't give any numbers of how valuable rest is or not. So I'd be interested to see at the end of this year how that played out for every other team and whether, hey, maybe that's just kind of where the Niners were at. But man, I can't. That that doesn't. That, to me, that doesn't excuse the Minnesota thing. No, I'm with you. I'm with so, you. Like, I think it's uh, like. I thought Cleveland played like Cleveland definitely punched above their weight. I thought in that game. Mm-hmm. Um. And I thought. I mean, Cincinnati's been a really good team that's gone on multiple deep playoff runs. So, like, I do believe in what they are and their foundation. 
but I do wonder, like, is that does that game go the same way if the Bengals, you know, played last week instead of and again, not making excuses. I'm just going back to the conversation we had over the summer when we talked about the rest discrepancy thing. Mm-hmm. And like it it does feel like maybe I overlooked it a little bit because I was like, look, if they're if they're gonna be a great team, they're gonna be a great team regardless of what No, but that's no, but that's but that's still the case. Yeah. They made they made enough mistakes against Cleveland that had nothing to do with rest for Yeah, me. that's true. Yeah. And then like I said, you get to Minnesota where it's all it was all the same. And they got smoked. And then you get into this week and it's like, man, they got smoked again. I mean, it's now a running thing. So they have they have a lot of questions to answer at the bye. Um, before we get out of here, what I mean, we I think it was it never really felt like like once Brock Purdy got on the practice field on Thursday, it felt like he was gonna play. Um but like there was that play late in the game where he fell backwards, slammed his head on the grass and then grabbed his head. I think that was a play that it was intercepted, but it got called back via penalty. I didn't know if he was grabbing mm. his head because he hit his head or if he was grabbing his head because he thought he just threw another pick. He definitely hit his head on the first interception. Yeah. I just, look, oh. here's, here's my, can I just, just I this is I, a, like, I can't do the like, oh, he was concussed. So that's why he played bad. Like, I can't do that because no. that's just like a massive assumption, but I'm just wondering, like, do the 49ers have like a real issue with their quarterback and, and like the health of his head? So, okay. So that, <laughs> so that's, that's the thing I wanted to bring up. Like, forget whether even last week, whether the concussion played a role. I don't, I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. I, I wonder, and this has nothing to do with the football game, so we're pausing talk on 49ers versus Bengals. Take the name and the teams away if you want. Player gets concussion Monday. Monday night. Plays Sunday afternoon? (laughs) That that just... And I I asked uh, Dr. Narav uh, Pandya from, from UCSF, as an orthopedic surgeon there and a, and a professor of, of sports medicine. And I said, Hey, help me understand with concussions. Are there like degrees of concussions? And he's like, yeah, for sure. You can basically have a low grade concussion where you can, you know, clear protocol in, in five days. I'm like, Okay. Like I'll, I'll buy that. But at the same time, I don't feel great about it. I don't love, I don't, I, I don't, I don't love that where, concussions are supposed to be a thing we're taking seriously and it's okay yeah he's good in five days let's go get him out there i just yeah, i don't know also there's don't something know, being symptomatic on the airplane home i don't know if we know what that necessarily means did he have a headache did he have like was it like oh i need to take some advil because i have a headache or was it like man i have like a massive unbearable headache or like i'm dizzy and have vertigo and can't stand up like we don't mm-hmm. have any answers to those questions right so I, I like i'm not distrustful of the process and what the nfl has in place for concussed players mm-hmm. but i'm with you in that like you know is this going to be something where we all have to be very careful or not. We all have to, but like the Niners have to be very careful every time something might happen to Brock Purdy where he's hitting his head on the ground or taking a hit. And we have to like, really wonder like, man, are they doing right by Brock? Right. Exactly. By even keeping him out there. Is it going to, and is it going to get to a point where like he took a hit and then the spotters are like, no, we're, we're taking you out. And then, you know, is that like, are the 49ers going to have to play Sam Darnold? In the like, throw Sam Darnold in the middle of a game during their playoff chase because Brock Purdy may or may not be concussed. Like that, this is the issue the Dolphins ran into last year with Tua, right? And it basically ruined their season. Mm-hmm. Although Skylar Thompson oh. lit it up in Buffalo. <laughs> now I ju- I don't maybe uh. maybe that's the avenue for I, I mean I don't know. Ideally, I don't know. I, ideally I feel, he doesn't have a brain injury moving forward. Ideally, for sure. <laughs> Yes, I. It just doesn't. It doesn't feel great. Like, 
have like watching this dude who may or may not have a head injury not know anything about it really and just be like well fingers crossed he's okay you know yeah. like i don't know it, like it to, to, to your point like it doesn't doesn't feel great knowing that he may or may not have gotten a concussion on monday and he's just playing football again on sunday yeah i don't i like i said i'm not i'm also not a doctor i don't know how i don't even know how concussion protocol works so hopefully he was a plus thumbs up ready to go rock and roll but i don't know don't know but like i said they got a lot of problems to figure out over the bye that have nothing to do with brock purdy so jacksonville went into went into pittsburgh and won today albeit against uh mitch trubisky i wasn't mitch did kenny Pickett get hurt yeah he left the game i think trubisky Mm -hmm. played most of the second half um but the jags have won what five straight something like that they've been playing well just kind of out of nowhere they got smoked by the texans and i don't think they've lost since also, the Texans lost to the Panthers. It's tough. Jags are five and two, or sorry, six and two. They've won five straight. They you beat the- Atlanta, Buffalo, Indy, New Orleans, and Pittsburgh. So, like, Buffalo's good, but that was a weird London game. They haven't beaten anyone awesome, but they're also getting their bye, and, like, they went to the playoffs last year, and they might have one of the best young quarterbacks in the league. So, even when the Niners get back off the bye, going on the road to Jacksonville – is far from like like oh they should they should just get right against a a bad team like that's going to be a tough game yeah yeah no i'm i'm totally with you jacksonville can can play and if their defense does not if the 49ers defense does not have some answers to what's been ailing them in the last couple weeks jacksonville is going to light them up trevor lawrence specifically so you want to talk about prize picks real quick um no but yes <laughs> yeah okay <let's> <laughs> uh i got two out, out of three i think i get two out of three every week dude that's why you get to same that's why the flex play is great yeah. because i got two out of three i had george kittle uh more than four receptions he had six i had brandon Ayuk more than four and a half receptions he had five i had joe mixon less than 76 and a half rushing and receiving yards he had 91 you know, <laughs> way way more but with the flex play with two out of three, I still got a little money. Still got a little, little money back on my wager. What I should have done, I get selfish. I get big headed. I get just eager for that 5X multiplier on my investment with the power play. Mm-hmm. So you come away with nothing. You have to go three for three. Um, I had Joe Burrow. I had less than. 245 and a half he had 283 Mm -hmm. that was the one i missed i had jamar chase more than seven and a half receptions he had 10 um and i had brandon Ayuk more than 59 and a half receiving yards and he had 109 i just steve wilkes man just costing me money try that flex play bro try that flex play unbelievable this guy's gotta go I am fed up. <laughs> Daily fantasy made easy with prize picks. Prizepicks.com slash candlestick. Promo code candlestick for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That is prizepicks.com slash candlestick. Use promo code candlestick for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. I love Does my mic sound okay man. this week. Yeah, it sounds great. Okay. We were having uh gain issues with the previous setup. So I think it was changed I th- the setup. I think it was a me problem as well. I'm not putting that on you. I I got a new I got a new mic arm. Just pulling back the curtain here. Got nice. a new mic arm, and it changed where the mic was oriented. Mm. And so I changed the gain and just listened to myself and thought that that was the right adjustment. Mm. But apparently, that gain, the the relation the the relationship of my gain to your gain was just completely mm. off kilter, and yeah. our our levels were just jacked. And I, totally. I just want to apologize to you for that. I want to apologize yeah. to the listeners. Yeah. Um, hopefully I've rectified the problem. Boy, we have a very fancy new setup that I'm really enjoying so far. And Great. hopefully it sounds, it sounds nice. Thank you for listening. Awesome. man. <laughs> hey, no, but you know what? Steve Wilk should take notes because you identified a problem 
Yeah. And you created a solution. Found a fix. You you explored fixes, you found one that works for you, and you executed. Right. And notice I didn't lead the, I didn't lead the, the pod thing. with my apology. I handled my business and then, you know, <laughs> we, we did our apology later. And just walk in here apologizing. Like what I just like... Thing. <laughs> Hey, the good news. Hey, silver lining. Hey, dude, we love silver linings on that. Maybe it's good that the 49ers lost today. <laughs> no, we remember love our silver linings. Remember when they didn't lose any ground on the Eagles three weeks ago and how awesome that was? <laughs> dude, totally. <laughs> They're second place in the division now, by the way. They're behind the Seahawks. So, not great. No, it's, it's definitely not. Uh, so, silver lining from today. I had a joke to say, and now I can't remember what it was. I'll skip it. Um, in the meantime, oh, silver Niners. lining for today. Steve Wilkes n- did not lose track of the time of game, as far as we know. As far as we know, that's a that's a win. Niners currently the six seed Oof. in the uh, in the NFC. Who finishes this that's, season? Seattle's a two seed right now. Yeah, man, Seattle's lighting it up. Seattle got a nice little comeback win against the Browns today. Mm. Every other team could apparently score on the Browns except for the 49ers. Seahawks put up 24, including 17 in the first quarter. Didn't the Colts hang 30 plus on them? Uh, yeah, the Gardner Minshew like Colts hung, thir- hung 38 on them. 38, okay. Yikes. Something named Jay Bobo scored a touchdown against the Browns today for the Seahawks. Jake been, Bobo, I believe, is his first name. He, yeah, he's Jake's been a uh, Jake's been a thing up there. Yeah, a lot of good throwback uniforms in the league today. Yeah, you know, you notice that? Sure, the Oilers. <laughs> you're anti. You're anti Titans wearing Oilers uniforms. I am not. I love the uniforms. I think the uniforms are elite. I would change nothing about them. They got striped socks. The color scheme, excellent. I just think it's super weird that the Titans are wearing those uniforms and not the Texans. But they wore them when they first moved to Tennessee. So you think the fans in Nashville have some like really deep rooted connection with the Oilers uniforms aside from them looking cool versus the people in Houston who had that team for however long they they were there for? Um n- no. <laughs> but it's the Oilers franchise that's in Tennessee now. So the Texans, the Texans wearing them would not make any sense. Right. I get it. But like if, okay, if the Ravens wore throwback Browns uniforms. No, because the Browns, be, because but the Browns be are a team. Houston now has if, a team. Now if, no, if, if Cleveland had come Houston back. got the, an expansion. To, we're if not, the, this if, is a dumb if argument. Cleveland, but, no, 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 no. Now, now it's semantics. that we're hashing, Dude, we're hashing this out right now. Uh, everybody, the 49ers talk is over. If you would like to leave, Chris and I are going to box over this. So (laughs) nah, bro. So look, if the Cleveland franchise had come back as the Cleveland, um, guardians, then yeah, the Ravens could wear Browns throwbacks, but because the Browns are in the league again, you can't. And if the, if the Houston team had come back as the Houston Oilers expansion team, then yeah, the Titans can't wear them. They're in the same division, the Titans and Texans. Yeah. It'd be and? like, I don't know, man. I'm just like, I love the uniforms. I just don't know what, like, I don't think anyone in Tennessee actually feels anything, any sort of feeling about the Oilers. They look cool. And that's why, that's why the Titans were wearing them. But like no one in Nashville is like, yeah, this reminds me of that team I grew up watching in town for with my dad for 30 years. <laughs> you know it what might I mean? if they if they harken back to the days of the Tennessee Oilers. I'm out. I'm out. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Seahawks throwbacks also really elite. good. I know we're really good. Know, we don't not football. Seahawks look, football rival. uniforms, football uniforms peaked in like the 80s. If every team wore the uniform that they wore in the 1980s, the league would be better. I don't know why the league has gone away from striped socks. You're this a might bit, you. A, this might just be a me thing, but any team that rocks striped socks, it's it makes your uniform. If you have a good look, it takes it from an eight to an eleven, in my opinion. Sure. Do you think that's a 49ers problem on defense right now? 
Yeah, no stripes on. We can't say it's not their biggest problem. It's a good point. <laughs> if we're ruling they things out, right? They had striped socks. They had striped socks when they won their Super Bowls. You do the math. <laughs> Uh no, you're totally right. Uh, Lori's of the mind that all Seahawk uniforms suck. Okay. I thought the the silver helmet with that color blue and the it's green. So I good. thought it was it's, it's, so good. it's a it's good so look. good. Uh, I <laughs> fair. Did did we though? So the people I think we did. Are, I think we got the exact. That's seeing fine. Put up on the. <laughs> That's right. You're right. Uh, Nate Thomas asked I mean, or said we didn't get enough Taylor Swift jokes slash talk today. I feel like we got the exact right amount in. No, I think we should make it sort of a regular thing just because there's probably an algorithm somewhere searching the Internet that will allow us to get more engagement just by Bro, saying the words Taylor Swift. In you are, this is why you're a genius. You're absolutely right. <laughs> we need to sit down. You have a a Taylor Swift fan prominently in your life. Mm-hmm. I have uh, several friends who are Taylor Swift fans. We need to describe some of the 49ers issues to them and have them come up with a Taylor Swift playlist to describe each issue. We will then do a podcast about that song. Yeah. and profit. I mean, we got a buy coming up. We can get creative with some concept ideas. Yeah, the bye week. Taylor's version. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just put Taylor's version in every. Hey, you see these viewership numbers just plummeting right now. <laughs> <laughs> like these assholes. Um, did Did she go to Denver today? I didn't even see. I saw the Chiefs got worked by the Broncos. So then I doubt she was there. Oh, Nate, Nate, Nate Thomas in the chat is reminding us of the Candy Crown Awards. We, the candies. We'll, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll do the candies. We'll pull them out for the bye week. My favorite thing. My favorite thing about the candies. I have to go. I have to go to bed. Uh, my favorite thing about the yeah, candies, though, you're, you you definitely got to go to bed. Was when we, dude, my alarm goes off at three thirty. It sucks. Yeah. Uh, when when Debo was on the pod, and he had we had given him a candy for like best touchdown or something, mm-hmm. and we we're like, hey Debo, you know, hey, you know, we give out these awards, and you won the award for best touchdown. You know, hey, congrats. How does it feel? And he was like, all right, <laughs> 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 moving on. <laughs> He is uh he is an interesting cat when it comes to talking with people like us. I'll put it that way. You know how you know how people go, I'm a no bullshit type of guy. And it's like they they, they clearly are. Like right. you, like you t- you are a complete you are a bullshit guy. Like right. totally. Debo is a no bullshit guy but for real for real. If you are in Debo's circle, he will chat you up and be super talkative and outgoing mm-hmm. and energetic and all those things. If you do not have the trust of Debo, you are getting what we got in that interview. <laughs> Just like let's let's talk Jordans. <laughs> yeah, it was he great. Was all about that. Well, he's it's he's great. he's welcome we really to come back it. at any point. It's just clear that you and I have not entered that circle yet, but maybe with another opportunity to have which him is, on the yeah, pod. Which is which is surprising. I'm I'm like I've been to games before. <laughs> How does he not know me? <laughs> all right. Okay. Hey, do you have, hold on. Okay, I mean, you went to the game. Do you have any takeaways from being at the game? Takeaways from being at the game. I hate sitting down in Narnia in the press box. Okay. People talk a lot. In the press box, yeah. In the press box. It's, it's crazy. Nice little flex on your part. It's actually crazy how much people talk. Like I'm, like I'm working. Um, the play-by-play yeah. in the press box, just not not necessary. Mm. Uh, don't Don't need that. I know I can also see the touchdown that just happened. Um, any other good uh, chicken tendies? No more at a charred ass burger. Um, okay. I'm trying to think so, if I ran into. I'm trying to think if I ran into anybody. I didn't. I didn't see anybody. I ran into some old coworkers, but nobody notable. So you can say hi to any of our friends there. I saw I saw Nick. I said hi to Nick. Okay. Josh Dubow talking mad shit about you. It was awesome. Great. Fair. I mean, it was it was terrible. Josh, I didn't like it and told him Josh to stop. Can, Josh can bring it. Josh can bring it. I can. Oh, I, I, I just sure. really, really enjoy the fact that the FBI is now looking into Michigan for reasons that 
<laughs> entirely clear but the fbi involved is is tickling me to no end even if it's probably a really stupid thing that the fbi is involved with <laughs> it's it just really cracks me up that the michigan football program is somehow being investigated by the fbi send them all to jail <laughs> Uh, I did see, you know what, uh, Ernesto, I did see Bonte Hill. I ran into Bonte on the concourse. Shout out to Bonte. TV zone. All right. Okay, Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yep. Subscribe Let's on YouTube see. if you've not already. Hit that like button if you're in here, uh, the little thumbs up. That helps us out a lot. All you have to do is click on it. You don't even have to, you don't have to do anything else. You just click on it, and you're all good. Uh, we'd appreciate that immensely. There's a notification button that will notify you whenever we go live. We would appreciate that as well. Subscribe Sub to the channel. That's extremely important also. Yeah, definitely do that. And also, if you're listening to the podcast, subscribe, rate, and also review wherever you get your pods. We would greatly appreciate that. So. See Thanks. you guys later in the week. Enjoy your bye. We will uh, we'll talk to you. We'll have plenty of bye week content for you as well. Absolutely. Yep. Play